imagine, not pretend, but imagine that the letter makes it clear that he hasn't resigned over his disillusionment or dissatisfaction with Boris Johnson. The bloke before did, Alex Allen, did resign after Boris Johnson refused to act upon an investigation that found Priti Patel to be a shameless bully. Here's what would happen in much of Britain now, in much of the media and political sphere. People would start claiming it as a victory now. People like Quentin Letts would pop up on Good Morning Britain where he had his pants roundly pulled down by Adil Ray this morning. If you haven't seen that clip, I recommend it. It's, 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 it's an absolute masterclass in holding people or, or insisting that people confine their commentary to the realms of objective reality. You'd have Daily Mail columnists and, 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 and other client journalists queuing up to claim it as a victory if the second ethics advisor to resign from Boris Johnson's government turned out not to have done it on a point of principle. That, I think, is the best illustration I can think of of how corrupt everything has become. They would try to sell it to you as proof that all of those biased lefties like Tobias Elwood and Brexit hardman Steve Baker um, have, have really come a cropper this time because it turned out that Lord Geit actually resigned to spend more time with his golf clubs and it had absolutely nothing whatsoever, whatever to do with the ministerial code or principle or anything else. And I'd just say br briefly, it, it, it's not, well, I think it's highly unlikely, but it's until this letter is published and the question you need to ask yourself this morning is why aren't Downing Street publishing these letters? It's pretty clear that Lord Geit would like them to. But let's pretend now rather than imagine that it is the case that this resignation has nothing to do with principle. Can you really look me in the eye, especially if you're still tugging the forelock, if you're still um, doffing the cap at Downing Street, can you really look me in the eye and tell me that there wouldn't be an incredibly disingenuous and dishonest attempt to portray the fact that an ethics advisor has resigned without condemning the Prime Minister in terms as some sort of victory? There just would be, wouldn't there? And that's mad. That's mad. So he can ignore an investigation into his own Home Secretary's bullying and prompt the resignation of his own independent advisor. You'll remember it's only a couple of weeks since the anti-corruption czar that he appointed himself, originally appointed by uh, Theresa May, John Penrose, husband of Dido Harding. But in July of 2019, that appointment was remade, if you like. He was reappointed by Boris Johnson in the role of anti-corruption czar. He felt he had to step down from that role just before the no-confidence vote. So in just under three years as Prime Minister, Boris Johnson has now lost two independent ethics advisers, almost certainly, a little imagination game notwithstanding, almost certainly both on fairly profound points of principle and his own anti-corruption champion. That's not normal. That's not normal. That's not normal.